Shalom Ubracha Yechi Amalach HaMashiach, I'm Yossi Edri. Tonight is Motzei Shabbos Parshas Masei, Tav Shen Pei Beis. And this is one week since the Machon Shilo Shabbaton and the official establishment of the Beis Havad Lachachomim. So I'd like to give my remarks for those who've been keeping track of what we're doing. Um, so of course everyone that's been following us knows that we've had the uh, establishment Sanhedrin Kinus Beis Nissan earlier this year in Yerushalayim Ira Kodesh, and uh, professors, rabbis, economic pro- uh, professionals, and others came and spoke at the Kinus uh, about different things that are necessary for the establishment of the Sanhedrin. Ever since the first Kinus. We've added to our MNGlobal, MashiachNewsGlobal.org website, we've added the Kohanim page, the Levim page, we've added uh, the Kihilat Torah Tashem Beret Yisrael, and we have upgraded the Beis Havad Lachachamim, Beis Havad Fundraiser, and so on. So, we are creating the foundations, the Yisod, of the Jewish, religious, correct, halachic way that the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael right now should be moving forward into the Geula. And uh, we've spoken about this. We have the whole series of the Sanhedrin establishment on YouTube. Uh, But in a very, in 30 seconds, there's three mitzvahs. Shalish mitzvahs, Nitztavu Yisrael, B'Sha'as, Knisasam La'aretz, Lemanes Lahem Melech, Mechias Amalek, and Binyin Beis Abchira. So the first thing is to establish a king, Minui Melech, that's a commandment, Som Tasim Alecha Melech, is the Pasuk Chomesh, in Torah. And the Rambam says, Ein Meman in Melech, El Alpi Beis Din Shel Shivim, you need to have a Beis Din Shel Shivim, in order to be Meman in Melech. Likewise, you see Moshe Rabbeinu, even though he wasn't technically a Melech, but he had a Shivim Skenim, the Sanhedrin uh, established when he built the Mishkan. So whether you're trying to build the Besamikdash first and then, or the Mishkan, and then go about finding a Melech, or whether you're planning on building a Melech first and then going about worrying about a Mishkan or a Besamikdash, in any case, it seems to be obvious that the Shivim Skenim, the Sanhedrin, has to be established first and foremost. And uh, this uh, has brought people like myself, uh, Yossi Edri, and people like Harav David Bar Chaim, and many others, including uh, Yosef Yitzchak Keller, Harav Yosef Yitzchak Keller from Crown Heights, uh, which uh, published and presented the Rebbe with the Sefer on Kiddush HaKodesh, uh, one of the first mitzvahs that the Sanhedrin will be dealing with. So, all of us agreed that uh, we need to focus on establishing the Sanhedrin before we move into the Geula. Of course, all the Yidden in the world keep saying that they want Mashiach. This is the most important thing. And uh, our kinos at uh, Yerushalayim, in Beis Nisan, close to Reish Chodesh Nisan, which is Reish Hashanah Limlachem Velamoyadim, made it very clear the... Sorry made it very clear the difference, the different uh, roles that the Kohanim have and the Levim have and that the Yoyatim and the Shoftim have different roles and of course all these specific roles need to be um, taught in Yeshiva. There has to be separate Shiorim, uh, especially for the Levim or especially geared towards the Levim, especially geared towards the Kohanim specially geared towards the Shoftim, specially geared towards the Yoyetzim, or the potential Yoyetzim. And uh, the Talmudim and the Yeshiva should be able to pick those Shiorim to go to in order to strengthen those places so that they can help Am Yisrael later on in their life in a real way, connected to Ruchnius, to connected to Yiddishkeit, connected to Geula in a proper way. In any case, um... 
so much about all of that. Now let's focus on the Shabbaton this past week. So, the initiator of the Kinnus in Yerushalayim, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, was myself and the MNGlobal.org team. And uh, the initiator of the Shabbaton this past week was the Machon Shilo team and Rabbi David Barheim. Uh, of course, there's many people behind in the Machon Shilo team, the honorable mentions, Yerachmiel and Rabbi Lemkin, and so on. Uh, the fact is that to start such a concept and to be able to have the azut to push such a concept is an, is an amazing thing. And I want to congratulate everybody that was at the Shabbaton uh, for having the omets to push forward into such a thing. Uh, this is not just another Shabbaton. This is the establishment of the Beis Havad L'Chachamim. And right now, officially, there are three rabbis in Eretz Yisrael, and I guess one rabbi in New York, Chutzlaretz, Chabadnik, which is part of the Beis Havad. So there's four official rabbis on the Beis Havad right now. Of course, we're trying to reach 10,000, and of course, we want that all of Am Yisrael should have representation. Of course, there's no issue if the rabbis are different, or if they hold different opinions. The main thing is that they're ready to listen to each other, ready to accept each other, to be able to um, deal in a way of ahavat chinam shel mamash towards each other. Of course, the point of the Beis Avad is not to uh, disintegrate communities into one melting pot. The, the opposite is the truth. Every community needs to continue to go in its derech and in its uh, minhag of Avedas Hashem as long as it can as long as the Sanhedrin doesn't make it an issue um, what is important though is the the Rabbanim should be able to stand in front of each other without uh, getting nichve mi chavero and being able to talk about the general things that Am Yisrael needs um, to work together on. Um, in that sense, this Shabbaton had a few parts, moving parts to it. And uh, for my Chavaya, there's one concept that was going on over there, which is the Kihilat Torah Hashem Be'eretz Yisrael, which is a very general concept, but more specifically, Rav David Bar Chaim's path which is very, very uh, amazing on, on in a certain levels, on, in, in certain ways, uh, but then on the other hand, very nuanced. So if someone is coming from, let's say, a completely non-orthodox, uh, non-observant background, or from a conservative or a foreign background, so then joining the Kila Torah Tashem Bert Yisrael under Harav Bar Chaim would be an amazing thing, because he is giving authenticity, and he's also giving the latest cutting-edge technology, so to speak, of Judaism in Eretz Yisrael. Um, why do I say that? Because he is... We know that there were... Uh, th there's a famous story of the Tana that fasted in order to forget Talmud Bavli so that he can focus more on Talmud Yerushalmi. And the con the, 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 that passes by people much, much faster than it should. It's a very deep concept. It's not just that he wanted to focus and learn the other thing because he, you know. It's much deeper than that. It's more um, that the Talmud Bavli is a Gullus way of thinking. And when you're in Gullus, you think of the Geula from a Gullus perspective. But once you're in Eretz Yisrael and you realize how close you are to, the, to, to actually creating the Geula, to manifesting the Geula in the physical world, you start to think like Talmud Yerushalmi. A lot less chit-chat, a lot more action. So, it's a different mentality. And of course, there's many minhagim that kind of were added on to Am Yisrael because it was cold in Russia and because of the Xeris and because of different things. But at the end of the day, when you're coming back to Eretz Yisrael and we have now millions of Yidin in Eretz Yisrael and millions of non-Jews which are the allies to Am Yisrael, which are ready to help Am Yisrael. So when you're in a new situation like that, um, it creates a new dynamic that's more prone to the Geula. So Harav David Bar Chaim is trying his best um, 
to create a narrative of 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 halacha that is reflective of uh, the halacha and Talmud Yerushalmi, which is more connected to Eretz Yisrael, and also connected more to the Geula. And also, uh, now that we have such a uh, vast uh, pool of information on, online and throughout the world, and we have so much documentation and evidence evidence of the Jewish people throughout the thousands of years in exile, we can see how the Temanim davened, how the Temanim read Kriyat Torah, different minhagim, and we can see where certain minhagim originated from and the authenticity level of each one of those things, and so on and so forth. So, um, for those who feel like their Masera and their tradition is 100%, then joining the Kiela Torah Hashem with the new minhagim and new way of looking at things, which are actually being uh, uh, practiced already, uh, can be a very big shock and also can also be a little bit miyutar. However, if you're coming from a completely non-orthodox, conservative, or a foreign background, which is already probably you know, you're not, you don't know anything anyway, or you're not, you haven't practiced proper Judaism anyway, so then the transition into this kind of kihila and to go directly into that um, derech would be much more easier. Now, what do I think long term? I don't think long term all of Am Yisrael is going to be able to accept everything that the kihila right now, as of now, with its limited uh, uh, right now, the Beis Havad is only four rabbis barely, uh, and uh, three of them are with our Bar Chaim, I'm sure, working on the details and, 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 and articulation of the Numen Hagim and things that they're trying to implement more correctly in, in Eretz Yisrael, and based on a Eretz Yisrael Geula life, uh, but the thing is that there's a lot of work to be done, of course, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that if 10,000 Rabbanim from all uh, parts of Am Yisrael are going to be sitting down and trying to work through a, a universal Nusach and a universal way that Am Yisrael should behave, it's going to look a lot different than whatever's going on right now. Uh, that being said, uh, Rabbi Bar Chaim has the full right to uh, conduct his community in his derech and in his shita, and for those who look up to him as their rav, uh, they have, I guess, the right to follow him and his minhagim, just like uh, if there's a Chabad Rabbanim that represent the Chabad community, and there are many Chabad Hasidim that hold them as their rav, um, follow the Chabad minhag and the Chabad derech, I would assume. And the same thing, v'chenhala, v'chenhala, satmer, bov of bells, uh, you know, temani, uh, you know, Sfaradi Ashkenazi, whatever it is. So there's the Kihila aspect, and then there's the universal Geula aspect of Am Yisrael. Uh, so that's very important to understand. So Rabbi Bar Chaim has, Harav David Bar Chaim has the Machon Shilo establishment, and they have a, a, a situation, a system that's going on in its own right. And then of course there's the compatibility, the common sense, the... Uh, the uh from the way uh the Malchus Arisha has you know conducted itself in the last two years regarding the uh the health uh, uh situation. Um so of course that's a common theme between all of the people in the Kihila, Torah Tashem Bert Israel and uh and the Beis Havad I would assume that they see the issue with the way uh the Malchus Arisha and the world uh, is is conducting itself in a way of hey um explicitly, uh, and uh, and in a way of tachbula is taaselach al milchama, but not uh, for any uh, godly matara, rather the detriment of, of of humanity and the and the detriment of of, of spirituality uh, in, in a holy way and a ruchnistic a proper kedusha way. So. Um, 
During this Shabbaton, I, of course, uh, joined because it was very important for me to re to meet the new members joining the Beis Abad. I was very happy to uh, hear them speak. And uh, even though I was the only Chabadnik, and, and as everyone knows, Chabadnik, <laughs> Chabadnik can't eat anybody else's food, pretty much. So I had to bring my own food and different things. But other than that, it was great to hear uh, Divrei Torah, to hear a new perspective, to hear uh, Chidushim, and truly, I heard Chidushim uh, that I never heard before. Um, there was uh, a speech that Rabbi David Bar Chaim gave regarding Targum Onkelos, how Targum Onkelos is technically a pirush, and, and should be looked at as such, one of the oldest pirushim on the Torah that we have, and uh, the Temanim give the Targum Onkelos a lot of... Uh, uh, weight and a lot of legitimacy and it is something that is perhaps lacking in the scholarly uh, portions of Am Yisrael today and of course uh, in Chabad everybody says Shnai Mekar Vechatargum Erev Shabbos and there's no issue with that in the Chabad community whatsoever however I do believe and, and we do study uh, Targum Onkelos as a Pirush uh, but I think uh, the significance of Targum Unkulus and the magnitude of Targum Unkulus could be kind of uh, skipped over sometimes. So we have to understand that it's one of the older and ancient Pirushim um, from the times of the of the Bayes, uh, Bayes Sheni, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah. So that was very interesting to hear. Um, it was also interesting to hear that uh, Simchas Torah doesn't have that much of a uh, kedusha uh, on the levels that the other chagim have, and uh, it was interesting to hear different, uh, you know, uh, theories of and concepts uh, that were floated around and different, uh, you know, relating to that topic and so on. Um, so, um, what did I take away from the Shabbos? I took away from the Shabbos that. Um, it's, of course, very important for everybody to join the Beis Havad, the, the, and, and the Kila Torah Tashem Baruch Yisrael. Um, uh, if you're, if you're a Rav, then you should join the Beis Havad. If you're, uh, a member of free society looking for, uh, a group of people which, uh, does not approve of the Malchus Arisha and is just watching the, the downfall of Golos Edoim in all of its proponents and uh, and and watching the the clip of the Tsionus falling apart of the, uh, as 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 this new area becomes available for the Geula so of course the Kihila is the place for you to hang out of course we have a uh, MNGlobal.org has a page, Kila Torah Tashem Baruch Yisrael. I should update a few more things, of course, over there. But the concept is that we should all be connected and working together um, to further um, the Geula. And the Beis Havad definitely has been established. Of course, um, on a, in a day-to-day -day life, uh, the Rabbanim, I'm sure, Rabbi Bar Chaim and the other Rabbis have uh, work to do and things to do and, you know, shiorim to give and people to meet and money to make. Um, so that's a very, uh, you know, that's the fact of the, of, of living in Eretz Yisrael. Um, I do think that this Shabbaton was a very great success, uh, very much like uh, the Kinos, uh, in Yerushalayim. Um, I'm very happy that I was able to attend this Shabbos of the establishment of the Beis Havad that was hosted by Machon Shiloh and Harav David Bar Chaim and I was very happy that uh, I was able to uh, host the earlier Kinos on Beis Nisan in Yerushalayim of uh, the establishment of the Sanhedrin and of course uh, every day we meet new people, we make new connections and I was very happy about the the chaver that I met at the Shabbaton, and uh, as actually as I'm speaking right now, this month this Shabbos Parshas uh, Masay, 
there was a Shabbat Shekulah Mashiach in Tveria, which uh, some of my friends here from Katsarin attended. And uh, I think it's uh, pretty uh, nice that there's this beautiful Retzef happening here of uh, great engagement of Yidden throughout Eretz Yisrael. And uh, of course, it's not so simple to pick up your family and go to a Shabbaton on the other side of the land or whatever it is. But there's a great uh, movement to kind of re-glue together the community of Am Yisrael because the last two years, uh, the Malchus Arisha with its um, detrimental um, uh, decisions has kind of uh, shattered up the community a little bit, as everybody I'm sure is aware of. And of course... Uh, is one of the facts that uh, is said about Am Yisrael and Golos. And of course, uh, the culmination of the last two years has been Birur and Libun Lavnu of Mi Vami Elchim Mila Shem Elai. You know, and uh, we've seen the communities of people who 100% would like to see the the Pasuk, Ki Hashem Amlucha O Moishel Bagoyim, come to full fruition. So we've seen the people that uh, identify with that and identify with the Geula in a realistic way and have never lost hope. Um, we've seen those people get together and uh, show their cards. And we've seen many people with long white beards that uh, you may have assumed um, would be pro the Geula, um, but the moment the the the, the Malchus Arusha scared them a little bit, they completely lost their head and they showed their true colors and they showed that uh, they are not made of leadership material. They are not to be trusted in a time of crisis and they are not to lead Am Yisrael. So I think that it was a very important concept that happened, and I'm very happy that it did. And it and it and it uh, allowed for the leadership in Am Yisrael to uh, find each other, and uh, to be able to push forward, of course, with the next most significant thing, which is establishment of the Sanhedrin. Um, during the Shabbos, we did speak about um, different things that are happening in Eretz Yisrael. For example, Yidin trying to establish new Yishuvim. Uh, without permission from the governments or from the police or from the military, which uh, one of the members asked, you know, this is a very big, it's a pikuach nefesh, and, and, and why should I go and build and spend years and years and time and energy for the government to come and destroy everything? And uh, why shouldn't we just try to work on the mili- on the political side of things? And... Uh, I do believe that if someone feels like that that's not for him, then he shouldn't do it. Because if it's not for him, then it's not for him. That's just my opinion. The, the, the answers that were given was, if it would be easy, then it wouldn't be a thing. In Eretz Yisrael, the fact on the ground is what actually matters. And then uh, we had someone get up that works with the Israeli military, and he said that the the, the Israeli government has its own way of helping with the Yishuvim, I guess. In other words, I think the best, the, the correct answer after hearing everybody speak over there was, if you are going to try to make a new Hit Yashvut, you should definitely try to, uh, you should never set up shop on your own um, if you know for sure they're going to destroy whatever you're going to put together. You should definitely make efforts to work with local law enforcement and local uh government officials, um, if they at least are not going to bother you and they make it clear to you that they're not going to bother you, then maybe you should go ahead with it. Um, I don't know. I can't talk for that because it's not the way uh, Chabad works. Chabad doesn't go on Svegis. As Chabad goes on Bari Veshema Bari Adif. And uh, that's that. And there's enough Bari in Eretz Yisrael um, to be dealing with a bunch of Shemas. Uh, But it does bring back the concept of 
gluing together the political parties. And I want to talk about that because one of the most important things that we have on our website on emmaglobal.org, and this is the, uh, you know, this is the mission statement that we put up. Um, uh, on our website, Miami Miamima, of course, we're going to change it once we finish those goals. Um, and the main concept was in order to establish a Sanhedrin, we need to unite the right wing Orthodox Jewish parties within the Israeli electoral, electoral system. So we need to see a strong right wing Orthodox Jewish presence within the Israeli electoral system so that um, we'll be able to throw a bill that says the, the Sanhedrin needs to be funded by Israeli taxpayer money. And uh, if anybody has a problem with that, then uh, the Israeli Orthodox Jewish parties can threaten to dissolve the government if, if, they, if their bill doesn't go through. Um, on that, that being said, of course, we come back to Itamar Ben-Gvir and Betzalel Smotrich. Um, Itamar Ben-Gvir is a great person. He speaks his truth. And Betzalel Smotrich is from the same school of thought um, and would probably vote the same. We, we can assume we'll vote very similar to Itamar Ben-Gvir. Uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir speaks his truth, and that is the fashion with which the Sephardic community communicate. So he resonates with the Sephardic community because the Sephardic community aren't scared of the KGB. They're not scared of their shadow. They don't, didn't grow up in hush-hush situations. So if someone's saying the truth and he's saying it clearly, then definitely he should be voted for and he should be backed. When it's coming to Shleimus Sa'ar, it's protecting the land. Uh, there's no one uh, that can be trusted like Itamar Ben-Gvir. Uh, Bitsalo Smotrich, uh, again, in action, probably would vote the same thing as Itamar Ben-Gvir, but he's Ashkenaz, and he doesn't say it as openly. He says it a little more subtle. He's a little more politically correct about how he presents it. Um, and that's why the Ashkenazim resonate with him of course they both need each other because the people that understand class political theater and subtlety will want to join itamar ben uh, will want to join itamar ben gvir through betzal smatrich of course if itamar ben gvir wasn't being loud no one would know what the subtlety that betzal smatrich is, e is you know is even and very possibly betzal smatrich wouldn't have the 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 strong passionate backing that he needs in order to actually do what he needs to do. Therefore, technically and theoretically, the the correct thing to do is that they should both link up and help each other, even though they're so different, because they really need each other. Um, we know that when they did make a coalition, uh, they got many many votes so I think that that's a very important point right now Itamar ben -Gvir is open to join with Bitsal Smotrich Bitsal Smotrich is I guess not sure that that's the correct thing for him to do or he's trying to uh, make sure he gets out on top or he's giving I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what he's up to and uh, I think he needs to get over his ego he needs to be a little more bittal he needs to really think about Am Yisrael and what he represents, not so much who he is and what he needs. He needs to look outside of himself and see what he represents and uh, line up with Itamar ben -Gvir. Um Of course, maybe they can join with other people as well. I would love to see um, uh, Rape, the group that uh, was against the vaccination process, um, join this kind of a coalition. I think that would be amazing. Uh, I would also like to see uh, this young girl. She's not necessarily Jew uh, religious, but she's the youngest uh, uh, person in politics over there that's trying to uh, make change for the younger people that feel like they don't have a voice, and she's really uh, giving it to them there in the Knesset. I'd love to see her join. I'd like to see. I'd love to see. Um, 
uh, Moshe Feiglin's good friend Gilad Alper join Itamar Ben Gvir and Betzalus Motrich. And I'd love to see our friend uh, Tnuva, 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 the Kalkalist, join uh, Itamar Ben Gvir and Betzalus Motrich. I think that coalition would be great. I think that would be amazing. Um, they have to understand that it's not about religious, non religious, this, that, populist. Not populist, communist, ah, bah, 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 bah. forget about all the labels. The truth need be said. Truth is that some people, you look at them in the Knesset and, 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 and you can't figure them out. Whether it's uh, Ahmed Tibi and these kind of people, you just look at them and, and, you, and you see the BS just flying out of their face. And uh, Bibi Netanyahu for the same price also has a lot of BS as part of his personality. The King of Jordan, they just made a whole uh, documentary about the King of Jordan. Very slick, very proper leadership material. He didn't like Bibi because Bibi is, 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 is like a like a fish in your hand, you know, jumping all over the place. You can't figure him out. He'll tell you everything you want to hear, but whatever. It's just too wishy-washy for any anything other than cliches. I mean, it's good for pictures. It's good for, you know, photo ops. It's good for all the people that want to adore Israel on a, on a very superficial level. But when it comes down to uh, more detailed work, it's very hard to deal with that. So Itamar ben has that legitimacy. He has that consistency, that can continuity. His message, his message has always been the same. Uh, remember, he ran with Otzma Yehudit, Baruch Marzel, Dr. Be, Michal Ben-Ari, uh, ben Gopstein, Every, all of those people that he ran with, very proper people, he's like, and they all, Bagatz was able to like cancel them all out and say that they don't, uh, they, they, they're they not allowed to run in uh, in Israeli politics. So honestly, Itamar ben is not just one person. He's representing um, a huge amount of uh, of Jews and a lot of ideologies together. And uh, he's just like the tip of the spear at the end of the day. So that's why I think that he's so important in the political uh, theater. If Bibi gets back inside and uh, the Likud gets back inside, uh, it won't be worth anything unless Itamar ben is in there somewhere. Um, that's just my opinion. Of course, Itamar ben ticket in is only through some kind of coalition with somebody. As far as I'm concerned, he can hug a tree and get in. But he needs to work together. There needs to be some kind of coalition. It could be with Shas, it could be with Gimel. But it needs to be with somebody. It needs to be serious and it needs to be quick and it needs to be fatal. Of course, I'm in touch with Itamar ben I'm in touch with his honorable wife. Uh, and I'm at their service if they need anything uh, in that field. Um... Yeah, so the base Abad has been established, and uh, it's been a week. Of course, uh, I probably it's been very hot in Israel and it's been draining me. Um, but I'd like this week to focus on talking to Kvod Arav David Bar Chaim. Um, you know, uh, seeing what the right next steps should be as far as the base Abad is concerned. Um, again, because we're dealing with his private community. And his private derech, as well as the general um, mission for Am Yisrael, there's so many moving parts that this is becoming a very interesting dance. And hopefully we'll be able to be complex enough to be able to deal with all the moving parts. Um, as far as my message to Rabbanei Chabad, definitely now is the time to join the Beis Havad L'Chachamim. Uh, now that it's officially established, um, and the uh, 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 and, and as well as other Rabbanim, anyone that's interested should be in touch with me. Fs Chameshtaim Arba Teisha Sheva Echad Shalosh Arba Teisha. Talk to me about how you want to help with the base Havad. Uh, and for those who want to learn more about all these different parts and all these moving parts of the new structure of the Geula. As it is documented on our website, you can go to mnglobal.org, mashiachnewsglobal.org, and we have so many um, 
you know, new branches uh, that we are uh, making available, articulating correctly for Am Yisrael. Of course, uh, eventually we want to have a cohesive, collective message to Am Yisrael and uh, allow Am Yisrael to join in a realistic way in establishing the Sanhedrin. Of course, if you'd like to donate to the Beis Havad fundraiser, uh, to be able to uh, support our work and allow us to give more time to this kind of work. Then, of course, there's the Beis Havad fundraiser page. I'm just saying that because I just need to say it. Um, I want to walk through a few concepts that we're working on right now. Um, right now, uh, the Sanhedrin market, a economic uh, option for Yidden throughout the world, we're going to start with Eretz Yisrael and then throughout the world. It's something that we are working on. So if anybody's into coding, um, especially with hardware, software, RFID chips, all that kind of stuff, we're looking for people in that field. We have the Sanhedrin Health Organization. And we have a, a few farmers and projects that we're working on right now. Hopefully uh, will bear fruit in the near future. So if anybody wants to help with health, uh, doctors, uh, businessmen, uh, health uh, uh, marketers, whatever you want to call them, different kinds of people in that venue. I can tell you more details about that as well. We have AdviseLink, which is the Bnei Noach Center um, for teaching uh, about Shabbat Mrs. Bnei Noach and for the Bnei Noach to run their own uh, advisory Yoatzim group within the Misgeret of the Sanhedrin, uh, within the context of the Beis Havad being established, we have the advise link, uh, which is the Yoatzim, which I'm happy to, the, the Yoatzim branches, which is I'm happy to be uh, leading. Um, and then, of course, the Beis Havad itself, we have the Levim Central and the Kohanim Central. Any Kohanim and any, any Levim that have strong material or they have uh, a shiurim that they have ready and prepared that they would want to give to to be able to decimate, uh, disseminate throughout Am Yisrael, please be in touch with us, especially if it's Geula geared. Uh, we definitely want to be in touch with you. We have Peretz Rifkin um, leading the Kohanim uh, uh, initiative from kohuna.org and we have uh, Yair Levi, the singer, for the uh, Yair Levi Halevi, um, leading the Levim, uh, the Levim uh, initiative. So those are the things that we're dealing with right now. Of course, we have the Sanhedrin events uh, that happened midday palm, um, and uh, a lot, a lot more coming. We're always busy on mnglobal.org. Of course, uh, if you want to buy leather tefillin bags, jewelry. Um, or chocolates for your loved ones in Tzfas and Eretz Yisrael. Um, we have links to those uh, businesses, and we have some uh, Mashiach merchandise, some T-shirts, and some stuff that we sell. And uh, yeah, you can support us in different ways. But of course, uh, you can also join our groups. We have the Sanhedrin newsroom, and we have the. Lion and the Lamb, Bnei Noach Yeshiva, and brainstorming for these kinds of ideas. So, of course, there's so many ways uh, to join us, many of them free, <laughs> and uh, we're more of a kihila and more of a push for those who still uh, haven't uh, forgotten uh, what we want Mashiach now really means. So, uh, yeah, Yechi Amalach, and a good to everybody, a good chedesh to everybody, and... Uh, Be'ez Hashem, na'asev and atzliach, and ve'nei'mona'at alacha yo'ismeisim.